Okay, so here we go. So let's get into it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually do this a little bit differently than I usually do it. We're going to be opening up the scene that we're going to be copying from and then working in that scene. So I'm actually going to do this all in play mode, which is a little weird, but it kind of makes sense, I think. So I'm going to enter play mode and navigate over to my fire scene, turn off maximize on play, unpause, pause and unpause just to get out of the maximized mode. And I'm going to expand this flame effects clone and I'm going to deactivate the wall flames and the dripping flames. And I'm gonna deactivate the menu canvas, right? So we can see our particles running and I'm just gonna rotate my view here a little bit. Let's select the flame particles, push F to frame selected and then just zoom out a little bit just so we can kind of see uh, maybe right about there. And let's turn off some of these gizmos or at least turn off the 3D icons so they're not so huge. All right, so this way we can see both in the game view and the scene view, we can see the particle system running and I'll show you a little trick to save your changes from play mode. Just don't accidentally leave play mode because you will lose your work, right? All right, so I'll show you another little workflow trick here, which is that what we're gonna do is I'm gonna use a, so normally this is a little kind of peek behind the wizard's curtain. Normally what I do is on my second monitor here, I have a text document with all the scripts that I'm gonna write or all the steps for the tutorial, but because really today is just copying a lot of values from the inspector and ins explaining them, I was kind of got halfway through typing it all out and I was like, you know what, I could just have a second inspector open here and just copy from that, uh, which is gonna be a little easier. So that's what I'm gonna do. And this is actually kind of a useful tip because this does come up sometimes where you wanna copy some of the settings from one object to another. You wanna look at two objects side by side uh, and having a second inspector is pretty useful for that. So. And I'm going to show you a little trick so you can have two objects selected at the same time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my flames particle effect. This is the parent object with the main flame texture on it. And then we also have the fire embers and the light as separate particles. So first we're going to copy this flames particle effect. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the thing that I want to get an inspector for go up here to the inspector, right click and choose add tab and select inspector. And so now I have two instances of the inspector docked. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take the second inspector and I'm gonna click this lock button over here. And what this allows me to do is now if I change the, if I change the selection, this doesn't change, it's gonna stay locked on the flames particle effect and I can view it and edit its properties uh, without while selecting other things. So I'm gonna actually take this and move it off screen to my second monitor, which is where I keep my secret notes. In case you guys thought I memorized all of these presentations, you now know that I do not. Um, I'm reading from a notepad document most of the time. And so, the, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create, let's deactivate both the embers and the light game objects temporarily. So we just have the main flames. So we can see, right, this is a composite of three different effects. Let's just look at those quickly before we start creating any of them. So we have the flames particle effect. Because it's apparent, I can't just deactivate it. What I'm gonna do is deactivate the emission for it, which is gonna stop it spawning particles. We have the embers, which is just these little glowing spots, sparks kind of. And then we also have the light, which is this kind of gently flickering lighting effect, which importantly matches the color of our particles. And you can see it's got a few little sort of flicks and flashes in it. And you can actually see it's literally just one particle that you can see there. You can see it better in the game view that is emitting that light. And we're gonna talk about how that works. Okay. So let's create this flames effect. We'll turn emission back on. And so what I'm gonna do is in the, let's see actually, so before maybe, before I start creating the flames, we've just covered some, some kind of basic setup. Let me take a pause for questions just so I can break this up and then 
we will continue. Corrupt turret. Yeah, the dripping flames is an intentional effect. It's like if you spilled gasoline or some kind of burning fluid. Um, yeah, somebody's asking, are these possible on mobile? You might have to strip out some things like the lights and stuff. It's really going to be a question of how many are you trying to run? What else are you running, right? If this is the only thing in your scene, you probably could get it running. If you've got 100,000 other game objects all doing similar stuff, probably not, right? So profile on your device is always the uh, the word in complex, in, in profiling complex scenes.